To create a clipping mask in uh, Illustrator, the uh, thing to remember is that the object you want to be masked needs to be behind the object that you're using as a mask. I'm going to just open up uh, an old file. And uh, see if I can find something here. So I'll just paste this in from an earlier file. And let's say maybe I want to just uh, a part of this. The inside, let's say, a rectangular shape or elliptical shape, whatever. As long as you put the object that you want to use as a mask on top, and I'll just go ahead and put this in here like this, and then select the whole of the objects. Okay, so I've got everything in, from the green leaf and the rectangle on top, and then go to Object, Clipping Mask, and Make, and it confines the image to just that interior portion there. So if you uh, let me just take uh, yeah, let me make a new layer out of this. And put it on its own layer just to, so I don't get it confused with something else. And if you look at what's going on here, I'll look up close at my layer here now. What you'll see when you open it up is a object that's uh, that's called a clipping mask, and there's the rectangle that's on top. That was the last thing I drew, so it's on the top, and then everything else below it are parts of the leaf. Okay, so long list of things going down there that uh, we used to make the uh, green leaf from before, but it's the top shape, this rectangle that has created the mask. Now, you can deselect and reselect just the rectangle. And so now you see that I've got just the rectangle selected. And if I want, I can move that rectangle into new spots around the image. So I can essentially mask a different part of it. Or I can change the shape of the mask if I've got maybe too much or I don't feel like it's it's in the right location. I can I can rearrange my mask this way. Okay, selecting from the layers panel is so much easier here than just about any other way you can do this. And so I just want you to be aware of that. Once you've drawn something, just click it open. Look for the layer that says clipping mask and or clipping group, I think it's called. And that top object will be the will be the uh, the mask. Now if you select everything, okay, and now I've selected everything, and then I'm going to deselect the mask, if it'll let me here. Let's see if I can maybe do it this way. Okay, well that's not working as well as I hoped it would. Let me uh, just, I'll select all the objects below this way. You can see there's quite a few there. Okay, so now I've got the uh, so now I've got the leaf selected, but not the mask. I can move it in behind the mask. So you can do either way. You can move the mask, or you can move the object behind the mask, and both ways will will be an effective way to do. To, to do that, to make any adjustments like that. Okay, if I just click on it, it comes in as a grouped object, and so it's all grouped there. And I uh, thought I could deselect that, but it doesn't let me. So, there it's deselected. Okay, so there is a way, I guess, you can do it. I turned off the visibility to deselect just the mask by itself. And you can see that you can move the object behind the mask. Okay, so all that works. Okay, now, you can also um, 
can also, with it selected, you can change your mind about it. If you decide, I don't really want to do that, go to Clipping Mask, you can release the Clipping Mask. And so now you're kind of back to where you were with a uh, rectangle on top that you can delete or get rid of or whatever. Decide maybe it shouldn't have been a rectangle in the first place. Maybe it was supposed to be an ellipse. And so you put a new shape on top there. You select everything that's involved. And you can make the clipping mask that way. Look, there's even a shortcut for it, Command-7. And now everything is just inside that ellipse. It's all still there. In fact, if you look in Outline View here, you can see that it's all still there. It's just that it's masked. Okay, and the uh, object in front is creating the mask. Okay, select object release is Option Command Seven. Okay, so you can do it. You can do that pretty easily and get rid of it. You can also use type. If you put type on top of the object, you can also use type. Now I'm going to do my initial typing down here, and I'll just use something like. Uh, I don't know, fall leaves. All right, again, my jumpy mouse, sorry about that. Boy, it's really jumpy. Okay, every time I'm working at home, I have that trouble. Okay, now I've got, uh, I've got, I've done some type here. I'll center the type. I, uh, we talked a little bit about this. If you make it really bold, and you don't have to use the first font that comes up, you can use any font that you like. I'll try this one today. Okay. And you can close up the space between the rows by going to your uh, character panel and tightening up the line spacing if you want. You can tighten up the words, the letter spacing as well, make it come in closer together. Those two options right there, that is line spacing. Sorry. Sorry. That is line spacing and tracking. Something about my desktop here, the, uh, the uh, mouse doesn't read real well. Okay, so now I've got the fall leaves there on top of the leaf. And again, if you just select everything that's involved, go to Object and Clipping Mask Make. And that's how you can put the uh, image in behind the uh, type there. Now, there's a lot of stuff you can still continue to do here. If you want, you can you can draw behind. Let's see if I can find my draw behind. There we go. And using a uh, maybe a rectangle here. I've just got some black. Looks like ready to go. And you can put uh, backgrounds in still behind here. Okay, so all that's still available uh, for you with that. And again, it's all still there. It's all still there. In outline view, you can see it. It's just masked. All right. So that's how you do uh, do that with uh, with a shape and another shape. You can use a shape with type, but you can also, if I can get this to shrink down without going crazy, okay, we'll put that over there. You can also use photography, and so I'm going to bring in a photograph here. I'll use the place command, and I'll come over here and find a photograph that I've got from another class. Let's see, there's the fall leaves. We're working with fall leaves, speaking of. Okay, and I just uh, bring this down so it fits on my screen a little better. And let me go back to my layers here. I can type. Uh, I can type a new. Uh, I can type a new bit of type here, or maybe I can copy this. Let's see if I can copy this. Copy and paste, and bring it to the front. Okay, so now I've got nothing. Let's see what happened in here. 
All right, I uh, just copied the type from over here and brought it in front of this photograph. This uh, is the, it, as far as the color of the type, it doesn't really matter. I intentionally changed it to green just to demonstrate here. And uh, again, to make this a mask, you just select both objects, the type and the picture, and you make a clipping mask. And you can see that the, that the type is in there like that. And over here in my layers, you can see the next, the next uh, sublayer, the next clipping group. And I can select the type by itself and move it to a new location wherever I think it might be better. Just don't, you just don't want to go outside of the photograph, of course. If you go to your outline view, you can see there's the photograph and here's the type moving on top of it. Going to back into preview. Okay, and you can see my type there. Kind of hard to see where it's uh, against that sky. But again, you can move that around until you get it in a spot that looks better. And you can decide for yourself, and that looks a little better. I'll just bring it over just a little bit. That actually looks pretty good. And then, as we mentioned before, you can do other things with it. You can put other colors in behind. I'll uh, use my draw behind again, and maybe use a, I don't know, maybe a, maybe a, a green for contrast here. I'll just draw in a box behind that. You can see see what that does. You can maybe pick a better green. There we go. That's a little better. Just something that'll show a little better with your type. And so you can mask photographs with type. Okay. Remember, you can select that and release it. Okay. Doesn't have to be with type. You can mask photographs with I'll get rid of that box. You can mask uh, photographs with shapes as well. If I wanted to use a polygon or a star or whatever here, just select the two. Oh, you'll want that to be in front. Arrange, bring to front. Okay, I had my draw behind still left, left on. Okay, select both of those. And again, mask. And you can mask. Any shape can mask a photograph. Any type can mask a photograph. Um, you know, you you can really just use anything in combination that way. And for your assignment, I'd like for you to, to experiment with that and try several until you get some good combinations and and make sure they're on their own artboard, as we've done before.